That looks awesome, kid. The name's Mr. Rodifer, kid. I'm looking for an artist to draw me, and I think you're just my guy for the job. What do you say? Sure. Uh, where can I contact you? Mother of mold, you're a greedy little fellow, aren't you? Eh? Hey, kid. I can tell you know what this. For something this simple, why don't you lower the price a bit, huh? Oh, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, I can, I, 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 I can do that. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Thanks, Bucko. I'll send you the five dollars later. Okay, you know what? That's it. Pack your things. Get out. You haven't paid rent in three months. Three months? No rent yet. Hiya. Wait. I can pay. Lutan? What are you doing over there? Five dollars? What kind of monster would do that? <sighs> okay, Lutan, let's chat once you get dried fur and take the cat. <gasps> Yes! Yeah. Before we get started, I want you to know something. When people come to you for commissioning, you aren't just an artist, you're an entrepreneur. This means you need to know the work's worth and treat it with respect. In doing so, you would be teaching your clients the value of your work and the work of other artists. Some artists may even look to you for reference once you make a name for yourself and base their prices relative to yours. If you undervalue, you're not only hurting yourself but the art community as a whole because you're essentially teaching a lot of people to undervalue art. That isn't sustainable or ethical, especially for those making a living on it. This concept is called lowballing. It's a common experience for young artists and can even happen in the art industry. To prevent it, artists need to do their research beforehand, as well as get some art friends to tell you when someone's being sketchy. Lucky for you, you got me. I'll teach you the basics, but that's it. Once I'm done, you have to tailor it based on what kind of art you do, like illustration or animation. Grab your popcorn. This might take a while. Do note what I'll tell you will be very general. I will teach you three things. How to price your art, how to set up your terms of service, and how to negotiate with your clients. First, how to price your art. Number one, general formula. Here are examples you use to price your artwork. Formula one is a project management triangle created by Dr. Martin Barnes in the 1980s. Here, you can pick one of the two, but not all three of them due to constraints. I'll give you a few seconds to pause the video here for reference. Moving on, we have Formula 2. This one is pretty standard, but you actually may not use this at first if you're still a new artist, since it could take a lot of time for you to create simple artwork. And it's also easier to charge per project. Take note of other things you may need to consider such as payment platform fees, like PayPal or Gcash fees, physical products that have printing and delivery costs, booth costs if you sell in a booth, and rent or living expenses if you're working. This means you would need to up your prices and also limit the slots you're willing to take because you might get burnt out. Search for credible artists on print or digital media and see how they price their works. Also, check for artists that create art similar to yours. Here are some examples. Number 3. 
Look for other resources such as articles and blogs, Reddit, Discord, YouTube, and books. You can find a lot of them online if you search for them. Notable ones are Naughty Excel's How to Commission and Crown Prince's video on what level is your art. Second, how to set your terms of service. Number one, build your process. Here's a sample process I use for my commissions. Estimate how long it takes for you to finish a part, and then double it. This is called the fudge ratio. Humans are very prone to the planning fallacy, so be careful. Number two, your terms. This is incredibly important to protect clients' rights. Let's start with the down payment and kill fee. You can use down payment by charging 50% once half the commission is complete, while the kill allows you to get paid even if they cancel a commission you've already done. You can also set terms on what you will or won't do. This includes the number of revisions they can have on a project, your right to cancel or refuse any order, and the type of art that you won't do. Other than that, you can also say what your art is intended for. If clients ask for commercial pieces, remember that the price should be much higher because they will be profiting from your artwork. You can charge them with higher rates, licensing, or royalties. Number 3. Your client's rights. Clients have the right to know what they can do with the art you give them, as well as their rights to intellectual property and refunds. What they can do with your art can range from being able to post it on any social media platform to use it commercially. Remember that clients can request PayPal chargebacks anytime. This is a bit risky for artists because they may request one when they've already finished. So, make sure to include in your terms that you can't request a refund if you've already finished or are in the process of finishing. The kill fees come in handy here as well. As such, you will be able to use it as evidence for any PayPal disputes. According to the World Trade Center 2021, intellectual property rights are rights given to the person over their creation. So, if clients commission you for their OCs, they would have the assurance that you wouldn't try to steal their creation. Number 4. Other things you can add to your terms would be where to contact you, payment method, where you would communicate with your client, and an order form, which is optional. You can also just include this in your commission sheet. Third, how to negotiate with your clients. Number one, don't accept the commission when you've just received it. Ask for a general overview of what they want, plus a deadline, and then give them an estimate for the price. How specific you want the prices to depend on your commission sheet and be aware of how long this commission might take you. Here's a sample receipt along with the commission and its estimated time. Number two, be flexible in dealing with the prices, but don't sell yourself short. To lift the price, you can remove additional designs and or suggest easier things to draw or do. Also, refer back to the iron triangle when needed. Number 3. Be firm but friendly in upholding your terms during the process. This will allow you to A. Remind them about your limits like your breaks and rights as the artist. B. Remind them about what they can and shouldn't do with the art. And C. Establish a sense of safety and rapport for both parties. And finally, number four, precautions. Informalities. Speaking casually can be used as a way for you to lower prices, so keep your professionalism even if they insist on being overly friendly. Exciting opportunities. No matter how good the opportunity looks, if they aren't willing to make compromises with you and your rates, then it isn't worth it. That would only be damaging to you and the art community as said before. Your work, no matter what level, has value that the world can benefit from, so don't disrespect it. It would be awful if your favorite artists were to lowball themselves because they didn't see their own worth, right? Alrighty, that's all for today, Lutan. Good job on listening this far. I just know you can be an amazing creative entrepreneur. Those mistakes you made earlier, those are absolutely necessary for anyone to become a good artist or designer. So don't get discouraged. You have to be able to see your mistakes first before you can correct them. So have courage, keep at it, and class is dismissed. I get it now. Why I've been having such a hard time. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I'll make you a cup of hot chocolate. It's okay, Rai. 
I can just stay here forever. I'm gonna use the knowledge you've taught me and pay back. He's gonna come back. Do you think he'll like the Christmas present, Cat? Yup.